Grab your teacups, get comfy, and join the Salon Solitaire because in modern Hoyoverse fashion, they've decided to write yet another essay for Miss Farina's kit. This time though, that's not a bad thing. Not just because I'm going to explain everything to you in an easy fashion, but also because her kit actually amounts to powerful gameplay. I really hate pinning the word broken onto characters, but with how well Farina provides universal damage bonus to the team with solid hydro application, it's hard to not praise what she brings to the tea table. As always, this guide will cover Farina's best artifacts and weapons to general playstyle and team compositions. Without further ado, let's get this guide rolling. Despite how much of a headache Farina's skill is to read, there's really only a few important things to note. Farina's arc alignment defaults to Usia, and when she's aligned with Usia, her skill will summon three Umphis to take the field. These cute little sea creatures act as hydro damage turrets, each with their own hit interval. When party members are above 50% HP, Farina will constantly consume her teammates' HP to increase the damage of these turrets. Farina can also switch her arc alignment with charge attacks to change her skill into a heal, but at C0, you're always going to want the damage over the healing since it is recommended to just run a dedicated healer alongside Farina. As for Farina's elemental burst, this is where the fun begins. So imagine an elemental burst that grants damage bonus to your entire party permanently. Imagine if it's not just for a specific element such as pyro damage bonus, or not just for a specific damage type like elemental skill or elemental burst damage bonus. It just straight up buffs any damage that you deal. Hydro charge attack? No problem. Electro burst? Fantastic. That's exactly what Farina's burst does. Once you activate her burst, for the next 18 seconds, each 1% change in your party's HP, whether that be through healing or losing HP, grants Farina what the game calls a fanfare stack. Fanfare stacks are correspondingly converted into damage percent bonus and healing bonus for the team. At C0, this damage percent buff caps at 69% with 300 fanfare stacks, but keep in mind that this does take a while to ramp up, so you'll most likely not reach this value until the tail end of your first rotation or even until the second rotation. Knowing that Farina's burst lasts for 18 seconds and only has a 15 second cooldown, it's crucial to know how much energy we need for that juicy permanent uptime on the damage bonus buffs. Farina has an awkward elemental particle generation very much like Yai Miko does, except Farina only has a 60 cost elemental burst as opposed to Yai's 90 cost. Players can expect around one particle every 2.5 to 3 seconds, which will force you to build around 170 to 180% energy recharge in most cases, and maybe a little bit higher without any Hydro teammate or Favonius weapon users. Switching Farina's arc alignment for healing instead of damage also does not generate any energy at all, so please just stick to the skill that deals damage. Given the vastly different turret speeds of each sea creature from her skill, Farina also has awkward Hydro application. She carves her own sweet spot into the roster, being not as good as the golden standards of Sheng Cho or Yulan, but does provide better application than a character like Kokomi. On average, she applies one unit of hydro application every 1.25 to 1.5 seconds compared to Kokomi's 2 seconds, but in practice there's a lot of variation between these numbers, so this is a rare case where I prefer the generalization and would simply say she's somewhere in between Kokomi and Yulan depending on skill timings. With artifacts, there's a clear-cut winner for the best set on Farina, and it's not even close. Golden Troop, not to be mistaken with Wanderer's Troop, is the only set that you should ever farm for Farina, bar any future artifact sets that we don't know about. Because Farina's goal at C0 is to quickly swap in and out after using her skill and burst, she gets full benefit from the 2-set and 4-set effects that grant a whopping 70% elemental skill damage bonus. Remember, pretty much all of her damage comes from her skill, while her burst is mainly buffing utility similar to Nahida, so this set is basically buffing all of her damage. Two set combinations such as the two set golden troop with a two set hydro damage bonus set, or just double two sets that provide hydro damage bonus are also viable substitutes while you farm the new 4.0 artifact domain. Artifact stats include HP or energy recharge in the sands, HP or hydro damage bonus in the goblet, and crit in the circlet. The general rule of thumb is to always use HP in the sands with an energy recharge sword, and only consider energy recharge sands if you have an HP or crit sword and cannot reach the 170 to 180% recommended energy requirement that I talked about earlier. With how many sources of damage bonus Farina gets from her burst, ascension talent, and 4 set golden troop, believe it or not, HP goblet actually performs around 1% better than hydro goblet. 
However, this damage difference is so minimal that we usually use whichever main piece has the better substats. As for what constitutes good substats, you're going to want to focus energy recharge first and foremost, and then crit rate, crit damage, and HP percent after you have enough energy recharge. Artifacts for Farina are short and sweet, but weapons are not so much. Mathematically, yes, her signature weapon gives her the most damage, but remember that a lack of an energy stat or passive does mean you have to balance that out through artifacts. Although it is very drippy for Farina, who very much does care about her outer appearance, for non-spenders, it is not a make or break signature open that you need to spend your primo gems on, given the free-to-play options we have and the other 5-star on the banner. The same principles apply to Farina's second best weapon, which is Primordial Jade Cutter. Tons of crit rate, a nice boost to HP, but yet again zero signs of an energy recharge passive or stat, which you need to make sure your artifacts make up for. In a very close third place, believe it or not, we have Festering Desire. While technically a free-to-play option, this sword is from patch 1.2 and it's so ancient that I can count the number of people I personally know that have this weapon on my fingers. That brings us to the next two options, which are Key of Kajnusut and Fleuve Sans Ferryman in the fourth and fifth spots of the rankings respectively. Key is a hard weapon to rate because of its dependency on teams that utilize elemental mastery, but can be seen as the best support-oriented option that deals slightly less damage than Festering Desire. Fleuve Sans Ferryman is the true free-to-play option that can be obtained from the Fontaine Fishing Association. This weapon is like a Festering Desire Light that, aside from crit rate, provides the extra energy recharge instead of elemental skill damage. Of the remaining swords in Genshin, I'd really only recommend Wolf Fang and Favonius Sword afterwards. Personally, I'm not a fan of the Battle Pass weapon Wolf Fang as much as I am of the 5-star crit options mentioned higher up in the rankings, but there's no denying that this weapon does output slightly more damage than an R5 Fishing Sword even at R1. I'm more of a fan of Favonius Sword, which single-handedly eliminates Farina's energy problems, but I know that this is a heavily contested sword on many people's accounts. Given that there's so many users of Favonius Sword, but not many characters that can use Fleuve Sans Ferryman as well as Farina can, it may be a better option to use the Fishing Sword even if you hate fishing. Now before I give you some of my favorite example teams for Farina, there are two very important statements that I want you to internalize. 1. Farina is not significantly better with Fontaine characters that consume their HP, and 2. You always want to run Farina with a healer to maximize how much HP she can drain from your team. Essentially, Farina is one of those characters that can simply be slotted into any team. Even with characters like Hu Tao, who normally always stay below 50% HP, the average damage bonus from Fanfare stacks is pretty much equivalent to the 33% pyro damage bonus she gets from her Ascension talent, allowing Hu Tao's current HP status to be irrelevant with Farina in the party. With that being said, there is no best team composition with Farina like there is no best team composition for common supports like Bennett or Kazuha. The only thing that Farina really wants in every single team is entire party healing or very strong single target healing that allows her ascension talent to activate and heal the party when the active character is overhealed. The biggest winners with Farina's release are Jean and Baiju thanks to their ability to heal the entire party and maybe also Kokomi, but she was already highly regarded as a pure supportive healer, so to a lesser extent for her. 4-star characters like Charlotte and Mika have strong upside with similar team-wide healing, but that's only as long as you can reach their demanding energy requirements. Moving into example team comps, here are a few teams that I think benefit the most from Farina's addition to the game. First up, we have Quick Bloom, which is just a Hyper Bloom and Quicken team mixed together, with more emphasis on aggravate or spread damage compared to Hyper Bloom. This team will take advantage of Farina as a solo Hydro character, paired with either Baiju or Yao Yao for healing in the second slot, Kuki or Dori for extra healing in the third slot, and then a flex slot for your Dendro or Electro DPS. If you feel like your Baiju or Yao Yao is enough healing for the team, then you can by all means replace Dori or Kuki for someone like Raiden as a Hyper Bloom trigger, or maybe characters like Fischl or Beto for raw off-field Electro damage. Alhatham and Nahida are the premier Dendro characters for spread damage, while Sino, Kaching, and Razor are great for Electro damage in Quick Bloom teams. The reason why I like Farina so much as a solo Hydro character in these teams is because running double Hydro puts more emphasis on creating Dendro cores and Hyper Bloom reactions, yet Farina's fanfare damage bonus does nothing to buff Hyper Bloom reactions. Quite the opposite reasoning takes place with Vaporize. 
Combining Hydro and Pyro together create a very simple reaction unlike Dendro, and the main reason why Vaporize benefits from Farina is because she can replace the ever so popular options of Bennett and Kazuha. Specifically in Bennett's case, he only heals the active character and does not heal your character to full HP. This is less ideal because Farina will not be able to convert any overheal for the active character into team-wide healing, which puts a hard cap on your fanfare stacking in the middle of a rotation. So a vaporized team with Farina generally looks like Farina, a second hydro applicator, a pyro carry, and a flex slot that is usually a healer. The second hydro applicator is important because some characters like Hu Tao have too much pyro application for Farina to handle solo, so the usual Xing Cho, Yulan, Kokomi, and even Mona with prototype Amber can provide hydro application plus extra utility to the team. Pyro carries include Hu Tao and Yuimiya as the best options, but also D Luke and Deha as some non limited character options. Healers for the flex slot are most commonly Jean for her ability to wield the 4 set Viridescent Veneerer, or Charlotte, Mika, or Chi Chi as Cryo healers that don't disrupt the vaporized reactions between your other units. And if you couldn't get enough of Cryo healers, once again they shine with Farina in a freeze team. The stonks of Mika just keep going higher with the release of Riesli and then Farina, and even Charlotte who does have energy problems before getting her constellations has a pretty solid pairing with Farina upon their release together. Freeze is so powerful with Farina because again many players don't have Kazuha who does most of the heavy lifting for Freeze teams. A setup with Farina as the solo Hydro character plus your favorite Crow DPS and either Charlotte, Diona, or Mika for Crow energy and heals works wonderfully as a core. The last character here would be an Animo healer like Jean or Sayu if you're using Cryo supports who have either weak healing or no healing such as Diona or Shen He, or maybe just a standard Animo grouper like Venti, Sucrose, or Kazuha if you're willing to put him and Farina on the same team. A lot of people ride off Freeze because its damage ceiling isn't as great as something like Hyperbloom, but sometimes with how safe it is against enemies that can't be frozen, you can comfortably have Farina consume the team's HP without feeling too squishy. Not to mention, it's also my favorite team archetype. With that, I have nothing else to discuss, so let me know your thoughts, builds, and teams for Farina down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this guide or thought it was useful, be sure to support both the video and the channel. The goal is 30k by the end of the year, and with your help, we can reach that goal. Other than that, it's the same as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.